Welcome everybody to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. We are covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, real estate, and the networks within. I'm Jamie Scott Okutaya, CEO of JSA. Today we are sitting down with Jim Matterson, the CEO of LightEdge, to discuss all the exciting new buzz around the company and its recent announcements. Welcome, Jim. Hi, Jamie. Thank you. We're so thrilled to have you here. Let's go ahead and just dive right in. There's so much news coming out of LightEdge with the launch of your revamped cloud solution, which is described as your most powerful cloud offering to date. Can you fill us in on this new solution and what it means for LightEdge customers? You bet. I'd be happy to. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Yes, the LightEdge cloud uh, is kind of our enterprise class um, cloud solution. Um, we are constantly enhancing uh, not only the, the features and capabilities of the, of the platform, but also the operational side of it as well. So it's a, it's a continuous enhancement. In this particular case, um, the benefits of our advancements from a development standpoint would provide the customer with operational benefits of kind of faster cloud um, with less complexity um, and ultimately, as everybody wants, less cost. Mm-hmm. Um, and those clients, you know, typically choose historically and still even more to, more so today, LightEdge because of our kind of security advancements um, and our uptime, um, which by taking care of that for our clients, it kind of allows them to extend their teams to focus on some of the things that they would want to focus on around performance and vulnerabilities. Um, from a technical standpoint, for those people that are that are more technical oriented, a couple of the things that we did from an improvement standpoint was focused around improving the user experience um, of the multi-cloud management um, through our enhanced and integrated VMware Cloud Director. Um, It included advancements with the NSXT technologies, uh, which allow customers to further um, micro-segmentation of their their business platform, um, next-gen firewalls, uh, built-in DDoS and global server management. So those would be some of the advancements that were included in this deployment. Incredible. That really sounds like uh, a lot of these advancements you've been uh, toiling away in the back end for some time. This is exciting news and an exciting time, especially when we look at uh, the world of cloud. Can you tell us one trend that you're seeing right now in cloud space? Yeah, you know, it's it's fairly obvious to many, but I, when I first was involved with LightEdge, and this was years ago, but even, even more recently, customers call it early adopters or maybe the early stage adopters. They were making a decision uh, and even not too distant past um, around the question of, should I move to the cloud? Um, can I move to the cloud? And then in many cases, they would go all in on a public cloud, cloud type of um, decision. Today, the advancements of the learnings of these businesses, not only the businesses that actually had gone to the cloud initially, but also the businesses that are actually considering what's the appropriate uh, platform or cloud for them to move to, they're taking a more pragmatic view of it, which is what are the unique requirements um, or the unique workload uh, definitions that I need to satisfy um, for all of my applications and capabilities? And by doing so, which is the appropriate approach, by doing so, they're, they're truly going at a deeper level to understand the best location for a particular workload based upon a very unique set of requirements. And that's what, frankly, LightEdge uh, has been doing for a long, long time, which is um, assisting clients in trying to understand that kind of a decision, which we're completely okay with, by the way, because there are so many uh, different types of workloads that some of them actually are built uh, for a public uh, a cloud environment. But in many cases, and in almost all cases, I should say, most customer environments are going to be segmented into a hybrid cloud type of environment. And that's mm-hmm. going to include some apps in public, some apps in private. So really taking sort of a, a customized approach to each use case, really. Yes. I like that. Yeah. And talking about um, new innovations, Light Edge was also unveiled this week, I believe, a new website. Mm-hmm. So what's new and improved with the iteration of this website? Yes, I am really happy that you brought that up because it, it, I, I am very excited about that because um, 
people that have dealt with, you know, multiple generations of a website certainly can relate to this. The ultimate goal behind the, the technological, you know, updates or the advancements to speed really is the user experience. And we wanted to provide an environment that frankly allowed, um, you know, decision makers, business decision makers who were going to visit, you know, a light edge uh, website um, and look for information that might help them in some of these decisions that they've got to make. We wanted to make that user interface as friendly as possible to provide flexibility in that, in that information journey. And that really is the ultimate goal. And I think the team did a great job with that. And I appreciate you bringing it up because it's, it's uh, something we've been working on for a while. And I should mention, too, that if you look over my shoulder, you can scan that QR code and get right to that innovative new site. So uh, hint, hint, guys, for those who want to see um, uh, the new unveiled website just this week. All right. So looking into the future, I love this question, especially when I have a CEO on a hot, on, in the hot seat, as they say. <laughs> yeah. um, but tell me, looking in your crystal ball, what do you envision for Light Edge in 2024 and beyond? Um, you know, it's it's uh, personally speaking, it's it's a, it's an exciting question. And the reason for it is it's we, we have, I think, um, at least one of the few times in our journey as a business that's been around for 20 years, we have what I, I think of as the perfect, you know, alignment of um, a team that culturally is just, you know, obviously I'm not objective, but um, is, I think, one of the best cultures in the um, in the industry. And secondly, that we've got a set of services and capabilities that we've been working on and for a long, long time. And we have a set of robust data centers that, frankly, every one of them. Um, is a world-class data center. None of them are, you know, retrofit type of facilities. These are really, really nice facilities. And then combine that um, with a phenomenal investor. Our, our partner in the investment community is really supportive. Um, we're looking to grow significantly. That has just started. We did two acquisitions in the first uh, 18 months of our relationship with, with our investor GI partners. Um, and we're just getting started. So you're going to hear more about um, not only M&A, you're going to hear about um, further advancements in our platform for uh, further growth on the organic side. Um, and then we're really taking steps into becoming more nimble uh, for our customers when it comes to innovation and advancements to our um, infrastructure as a service capabilities. And, you know, part of that is, um, you know, we recently hired uh, a new chief growth officer that I don't, I'm not sure we have announced yet, but mm. shortly we will. Um, and we're pretty excited about that. All of that is centered around how we advance our business, um, not only on the product and the service side, um, but on the geographical side as well. So growth, 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 2024. Yes, yes. Watch out. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Jim. <clears throat> and thank you viewers for tuning in. As always, happy networking.